Today, I'm going to show you how to remove eye wrinkles in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is going to be awesome for all you guys who are photographing anyone who's above the age of pretty much about 25. I got it going myself. We're talking about eye wrinkles here. This is something that just happens after you smile a lot, you get a little bit of wrinkles going on in your eyes. Nothing at all wrong with it, but if you want to reduce these in Photoshop, we're going to show you how in today's episode. Now I found that when you try to remove eye wrinkles completely, people tend to look really weird because that is a part of your features. So instead of removing them completely today, we're gonna to show you how to reduce those eye wrinkles and still make a realistic result. We're gonna be using a combination of the healing brush tool and the fade command to reduce every single wrinkle. All right guys, we got an awesome episode. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. All right guys, so here's our image for today. We've got a beautiful woman. We're just gonna to go to work here on reducing some of these wrinkles right around her eyes. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new layer. All right, and we're gonna to go to our healing brush tool. Now, a lot of times you have the option to choose between your spot healing brush tool and your regular healing brush. Now, your regular healing brush allows you to actually choose the sample point yourself. So in this case, when we're dealing something that's like as delicate as around the eyes, I really recommend choosing your own sample point. So we're gonna use the regular healing brush here. Now, also make sure you're where it says sample, make sure it's checked on current and below because we are in a new layer here. You wanna make sure it's sampling the new layer and everything that's below it. Okay, so we're gonna start off by reducing this main wrinkle right here. We're gonna hold Alt or Option and I'm gonna sample this skin tone right over here and then we're gonna paint right over top of this wrinkle. There we go, to remove it. And we're gonna come all the way back down there. Now, as you can see, it's pretty much gone. But what tends to happen is this tends to look just a little bit fake. And that's where the fade command comes in. So you can fade anything you've just done in Photoshop. It's really easy to do. Just go to edit and then down here to where it says fade. And then we just use the healing brush. So it says healing brush here. Now I recommend using this keyboard shortcut, which is shift command F. So we're just gonna do that. Shift command F, that's gonna bring up our little fade command. Now, this is incredibly helpful because I can choose from an opacity of 100 and check this out. As I go down, I'm going to go all the way to where this wrinkle is completely visible and I can choose just how much I want it to be there. So as we go somewhere right about there, we still get a realistic result, right? We're just fading away that wrinkle, which is the really cool way to do it. All right, let's just do this a couple more times so you guys get a kind of a feel of how this works. So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take this one away, Alt or Option, sample right here, and I'm gonna paint right over top of that one. Shift Command F, all right, and we're just gonna fade that away just a little bit. Now, the difference here, instead of just reducing the opacity of the entire layer, which would just kind of like fade away every single command, we're able to control the fade for every single brush stroke. So instead of doing the entire thing at once, we're doing it brush stroke by brush stroke, which gives us a ton more control. All right, so now that we know the basic idea, let's go ahead and get to work. We're gonna hold Alt or Option and go ahead and click and paint right up there to reduce this. There we go, all the way down there. Shift Command F and we're just gonna fade that away a little bit. Again, we don't wanna make these completely invisible because it, it, trust me, it tends to look really, really weird when you have someone who's obviously not 12 years old and they don't have a single wrinkle on their face. It, <laughs> it looks really weird. Plus expressions tend to be warped. So I really recommend reducing these wrinkles. All right, Shift Command F and we're gonna go ahead and fade that down. And you can always choose. If you wanna go back over a spot again, that's totally up to you. You can go over a spot as many times as you'd like. There we go. Or if you don't like something you just did, like it's the case what I just did, just hit Command Z to undo it and you're good to go. There we go. Just paint over that there. Shift Command F and then we're just gonna fade that away just a little bit. All right, we'll even do that with right inside of the eye here. Alrighty. We just want like a lighter version of what's going on here. We don't need it to be so dark. There we go. Because wrinkles really do, they catch light and they catch shadow and that's what makes them 
look so dark. Like this area is dark here, but we're just going to paint right over it, making it light. There we go. Kind of helping that look a little bit better. And then we're going to just fade it in. So we still have, you can see, it still have the definition there, but we're going to look a lot less dark, which helps around the eyes. All right, shift command F and we're going to fade that around. All right, let's do this one little line right down there one more time. And shift command F to fade that out just a little bit there. Okay, cool. Well, let's go ahead and see what this looks like before and the after. So here's our before just a second ago. We'll zoom out so we can see again, we wanted to make sure that it looks realistic. So zoomed out and then there we go. There's the after. Now, if anything is like, you know what, that's still too much, not a big deal, guys. Just hit the eraser tool. So E for the eraser tool. And then what you want to do is bring your opacity down to about 20%. So you can hit two for the number 20. There we go. Two is going to bring your opacity down to 20%. And then you can just paint right over a specific area and it's going to bring back some of that original detail. All right. And then you could use the healing brush over top of it if you'd like one more time. But in this case, I think we're looking really good. So we just removed the wrinkles on one of her eyes. Now let's go ahead and focus in on the other. Okay, so we're basically using the same technique here. Now I'm just gonna create a new layer just so we have something to separate. So I can turn one layer off and on and the other one for the other eye. Okay, so on this layer, again, you want your brush size to be right about the size that's gonna take care of your wrinkle. So Alt or Option, we're gonna sample right here and then we're gonna go ahead and paint right over top of this area. All right, beautiful. Now, if you do get anything like this, basically what that is is like your sample point has gone outside of the face. So not a big deal. You can actually do a lot of these in two steps. So for instance, if you wanna do just like hit this part of the wrinkle with one step and then stop it over there, you can always get the rest with the next. All right, shift command F, we're just gonna do our fade command to allow that to come in just a little bit more. There we go, and paint this in. Shift command F for our fade. All right, this is so nice because it really does make people, you know, it, it doesn't look fake. That's what I really like about this technique. It allows people to like keep all their features, you know, their smile lines and everything like that intact. There we go but it does help to remove these or reduce them anyway. All right, paint right under there and hit shift command F and we're just gonna fade that out a little bit more as well. Okay, cool. Now we've done this with eyes, but this can work anywhere guys. If you have like a little, like a, this area on her nose, maybe you just wanna remove that. You can use the exact same technique on her nose. You can do it basically anywhere on a person's face. Any little like wrinkle or blemish you want to get rid of. If you want to show a little bit of the original, just hit shift command F and fade it away and it's going to look a lot more natural. And that's all there is to it guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at our before and our after. Here's our before and the after. All right guys, that's all there is to reducing eye wrinkles in Photoshop. Just follow these key steps. First, you want to create a new layer and grab the regular healing brush tool. This is going to allow you to sample the area of skin you want to replace the wrinkles. Next, go ahead and paint over your wrinkles. You want to get the entire wrinkle if you can. Now to fade that out, we're going to go to edit and then down to fade healing brush or just hit shift command F and you can fade out your healing brush. Just choose the percentage that works best for you. Fading out each individual brush stroke gives you a lot more control than fading out an entire layer. This way it allows you to fine tune every single wrinkle. And if there are any other blemishes or wrinkles on a person's face, this technique is going to work perfectly for those as well. And that's the end of our episode, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope this helps remove eye wrinkles in your next photo. If you love Photoshop and photography like I do, click on your screen right about now. We're going to put a giant subscribe button on there. What that does, it will send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, leave it right down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Messed it up right at the outro. Speak slower. It'll make you mess up less.
And you guys may have noticed we've got a new microphone set up here. Um, we've been doing a lot of microphone testing and for the last like 10 episodes, we've had a Rode NTG2, which is a shotgun mic on a boom that's like, you know, right above the frame, like basically pointing at me. But the problem with that, we get like a lot of background noise and it really doesn't sound super full. So we decided to bring a mic in. This is the Rode Procaster, which is an XLR mic and I'm using the Scarlett 2i2 by uh, focus right the boxes on the ground so I'm like looking at that uh, we'll put details down in the bottom uh, basically it's taking this XLR mic and converting it into a USB that we can just record directly on the computer and basically we're trying out this new audio setup I know the audio quality sounds great the only like slight downside is we've got a giant microphone in the frame now um, but I actually don't mind it too much let me go what do you guys think is the microphone like totally annoying or is it uh, kind of cool to have in the frame I'd love to hear from you Thanks, guys. Learn you later. Bye, everyone. And that. Ah. <laughs>